Greetings viewers, and I'm sure that you remember this from my last video where I dealt with the Lenovo Think Center over there and installed it in the low-end radio studio. I left this thing without something to do, and I got something in mind for it. Those of you that are just tuning in, this is the HP Pavilion. Well, I can't really read that anymore, but uh, it was a Pavilion A320N. I think I gave $15 for this at the thrift store on an as-is basis. It uh, turned out not to work. The motherboard had failed, so I pulled it all out. And what we ended up with is this, which I can't move because the feet are getting stuck on the table. Actually, it's not the feet, it's the front panel. <laughs> uh, this is a very unwieldy case, but uh, regardless, this is what is here. And I don't have a video light either, so this might be a little interesting. Either way, you can see that's very definitely not period correct hardware. This would have been an AMD, probably a, an Athlon XP of some kind. This is actually a Core 2 machine with a custom heatsink. Actually, a low profile heatsink because that was the cheapest heatsink they had. This is an Intel DQ35JOE motherboard. It's got an Intel Core 2 Duo E 8200 CPU. I think it's got 4 gigs of RAM installed on it. It might be 8. I don't actually remember, but it will eventually be upgraded to 8. Uh, it's got this 80 plus HEC power supply in it. This is the only system I own that this power supply will work in, which is very interesting. Um, no hard drive in it right now because I pulled the drive out to go into the other machine that's in the studio now. It's got this lovely card reader installed in here. That was from Adele. Wow, is the field of view on this camera ever narrow. Still has the HP supplied CD burner right there. And also the DVD-ROM. The DVD-ROM doesn't work, so I will be replacing that. Uh, but I'm also going to be replacing this motherboard because, as it turns out, I have this right here. This is a slight upgrade in terms of board. It's a Q45 chipset with a DQ45CB motherboard on a DQ35CB motherboard. 8 gigabytes of installed memory and a Core 2 Quad Q8400 CPU. This is as found, and it does work. Superficially, anyway. I have no idea why it was thrown out intact. Just that it was. And so here it is. We're going to be installing this board. So let's get started with that by flipping this around and pulling out all the cabling. Okay, well that wasn't so bad, even though it's got one of these really annoying standoffs in it. I don't like those. But uh, regardless, the old board is out. And now, live, in theory, wants to be difficult. Usually I can do this with one hand, but maybe not today. But I was going to take the I.O. shield out for you. I guess I won't be doing that. Here's the old board. You can see just how small that heatsink really is in comparison to the massive Intel one. And it does indeed have 4 gigs of RAM on it. They're not even really matched memory modules either. Hopefully I can get those matching. So, let's uh, go ahead and remove this I.O. shield. Put in the new I.O. shield because it is different. And get this thing ready to go. Okay, a new board is installed. I don't have any of the peripherals hooked up yet because I want to do a preliminary test. Oh, there is one thing I forgot. Not important. Ultimately, probably won't even matter. Probably doesn't even register on the small potatoes of the scale on which things matter, but I want it there. So, plug in the fan. And we can do that live for all of your watching pleasure. You can watch me struggle to plug in the fan. Alright, so there it is. The case fan. Hopefully it works. Alright, so everything should be there that I need to give this a quick test. I hope because this thing uses a single piece front panel connection as you can see down there that all of those are standardized across Intel boards and this is going to work I guess we'll find out is it going to stay running? No, I'll just shut down it works at least I got uh, that much going for it. And there we go. But it do its post thing. Let's 
to set up. Have a quick look. Here's our CPU Q8400. Here's all our RAM. Looks like we are set. Eh, not quite correct, but that can be fixed. Should be 16. It's 4 o'clock, not 5. This thing wasn't changed for daylight savings time ending. And of course, we will need to figure out all of these details, but I will do that off camera and, uh, and then we'll start installing peripherals. The first thing that we are going to install, because this is going to be used as a capture computer as well as a system for doing a YouTube live streams, because I'm tired of using the cell phone, is this. This is a Hoppage Win TV, something or another. It's based on the Connexant 878A. And uh, any luck, this card should work in this system. But I'll probably find that I'm unlucky and it won't. I don't remember having too many issues with it, but that could change. I do want to note that it's not being very, it's being very stubborn about installing itself in this case. Give me a minute. All right, that's in there. Now for a video card, and my choice for a video card was originally going to be this. This is an EVGA GeForce 8800 GS. I believe this was courtesy of Weasel 2 HTM in a box of expansion cards that arrived at the Hamfest, but alas, it requires a PCI Express power connector and this power supply does not have one. Wah, wah, wah. So, I'm going to try out this video card first, just because I'm curious if it works. I'm pretty sure it doesn't support DirectX 10. This is a little Matrox thing. Exactly what it is, I don't know, because it doesn't really say anything on it. MGI, I don't know, Matrox Max 2, I'll plug it in and give it a shot, just see what it does. Well, it certainly went into place, I'm not going to screw it in because I'm not going to keep it in there, but I'm curious about two things, does it work, and what is it? Alright. Oh, well, the fan is good. Is it going to post? I don't know. That's not looking... Oh, here we go. Oh, it doesn't tell me. I thought they usually had a sign-on splash. These Matrox cards did. But it works. So I guess there's that. That's funny. PCI Express graphics negotiated with, not detected, and yet here I am using a PCI Express graphics card. Hmm. That's weird. Alright, let's pull that thing out of there and put something actually worthy in. Okay, I did a little bit of research. As it turns out, there is a sticker on it that tells us a little bit more about what it is. That sticker right there. See that? This is a Matrix Parhelion APVE, 128 megabytes of memory, and predictably, of course, it really isn't going to support what I want. So, cool that it works. I throw it into another machine that uh, uses that. Go ahead and try it out and see what it can do. But let's put in something real and uh, give this thing, hopefully, what it will need. I have this card installed now. This is, I forget exactly, I think it's an 8400GS. It's working fine, although it's based on the G84 silicon. Sorry, I think this is the G86 silicon, if I remember correctly. So, not that great, so I'm going to pull that out. I have one more card that I can try, just to see what it is, before I actually put, you know, the final card in there, which is going to be the Quadro FX 1800. Assuming it still works. I haven't used it in a while. Alright, here it is. Installed. Quadro FX1800. 
I wanted to put the 4600 in here, but unfortunately, that also needs the PCI Express power connection. Still not entirely sure why it says not detected on the PCI Express graphics negotiated with, but either way, it is working. So, I'm going to put the external serial ATA thing here, and if you're wondering why this is out, I'm thinking about maybe putting in a wireless card as opposed to using the Ethernet. But I haven't really decided yet. I'll probably just use the Ethernet though. Alright, there we go. ESATA plugged in. Everything is coming into place. I've decided to go ahead with just using the Ethernet, but we have hit a snag. A particularly interesting snag because there is one thing this motherboard is missing and that is IDE for these optical drives. I didn't know I had to replace this one anyway but it looks like I'm going to have to replace them both. What fun! Well, my camera over here died so I actually had to change cameras I'm using the other Canon now. That one will need to be charged but uh, I've got the two new optical drives installed one is a Samsung drive, the other is an LG. And the LG actually had this in it. Which is interesting, I don't even know what it's for. But we've hit another snag. Another very interesting snag, because there are only two SATA power connectors on this power supply. For shame. So, I'm going to have to use a Molex to SATA adapter on this. And get out the hard drive. That's unfortunate. Here, by the way, for those wondering, is the drive that we are going to use. It's a Western Digital Velociraptor. 300 gigabytes in size. Should be more than big enough for the temporary storage that I need to use it for. Oh god, another snag. I forgot about that. So that could be a little interesting. Hopefully it's going to actually fit in the bracket. I guess we'll find out in a second. Fits in like a glove. Like it doesn't even have that problem at all. That's the way it should be. Now let's put that in the computer. Of course, why is it not focusing? Of course, get it all in place, all nice and hooked up. And it turns out the drive doesn't even work. I don't know why it doesn't work, because it worked when I last used it, but why am I not surprised? So, time to replace it with something else, I guess. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll check our drives now. I went ahead and I threw in a 160 gig Western Digital drive that came out of the Think Setter in the first place. We'll see if it's any better, any happier. That's eh, a lot better. I don't know why the ports are all messed up like that, though. And my battery is almost dead. So, I'll have to make this quick. But we're going to be installing Windows 7. And it will be 32-bit, so you can see I've dropped it down to 4 gigs of RAM because 8 gigs is useless for 32-bit. The reason why I'm using 32-bit is because this card will not install under 64-bit. I had quite the hell of a time trying to get that to work on the uh, machine over there before eventually just giving up on it because I didn't want to reinstall Windows. So, that's how we'll do it. ay 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 Apparently... We have some issues here. This is a fresh installation, and there's really no excuse for it. So I don't know if Microsoft is having some problems with their servers because DST is just around the corner, or what, because nothing is working. I can't activate. This thing is not downloading. Oh, look, it's actually doing something, and then it crashes. Of course it does, because it's a piece of junk. Trying to install Windows fresh these days is about as pointless as pissing on a spark plug. Clearly I'm going to have to find a new installation or an older installation from some other machine that I can load onto this and get it to work that way. Okay, so apparently the issue is that at some point in time, Microsoft changed the way the activation servers and the update servers talk to clients and it just breaks everything because I installed the 2016 update rollup and everything just started working so okay whatever I guess so I don't have to go hog heaven on the thing now I guess okay let's wrap this up so you can see it's here 
it's all up to date. There are a couple of things that I will still need to do. And I forgot that the capture card I installed in there is limited to 320 by 240 video, so it really doesn't look that good. But I mean, I have this random camera hooked up. It's working fine. Everything seems to be good in that regard. And if I really wanted to, I can actually get it to pass audio um, through the, uh, the input. But uh, I'll have to get a better cable for that, one. And two, um, well, probably won't do that. I'll probably just use this little microphone, which I've had hooked up. So that's pretty much going to do it. So thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off. Hope to see you next time. Till then.